Uh, Governor, can you just give us an update on where things stand uh, on the ground right now, how things are going? We're still in the thick of the fight, without question. Uh, we've lost just almost 6,000 uh, of our blessed residents. We have 109,000 folks who have tested positive. But the, some of the trend lines are beginning to look encouraging. Hospitalizations have started to come down, which is very encouraging. Still not as low as we'd like. Uh, intensive care units have stabilized down slightly in ventilator use, et cetera. We're in that paradoxical period that Dr. Fauci warned us of where some of the data looks good. Positive test curve is flattening without question, yet we're still losing folks, uh, you know, in some cases, several hundred a day. Uh, but we are beginning to sort of f fight our way through this. We're not anywhere near out of the woods yet, uh, but there's no, no question at the same time that we're making progress. The fact that folks have stayed at home, stayed away from each other, has been a huge success so far in New Jersey. How much more improvement would you need to see before you feel like you can start to open the state, at least relax some of, of the restrictions that have been put on? We're going to go through, actually, later today, sort of the principles that will guide us. But we're going to have to see meaningful reductions in things like uh, positive test results and, more importantly, hospitalizations. The positive test results piece is a little bit squishy because we're testing. I think we're the fourth highest tested state in America. We've come from nothing to there. But the, we still don't have uh, the, the answer to the question of what's the denominator we do know on hospitalizations, you know for sure if somebody's in the hospital, why they're there. So we need to see meaningful reduction uh, of, those, of those curves. Uh, and God willing, they'll come in the next several weeks. Uh, but we're not there yet. I, I believe what I was reading over the weekend suggested that in New Jersey, at least, I think something like 43 percent of the tests that are given come back positive. And, and that number, I think, has to come down to closer to 10 percent before we can feel like we're actually doing adequate testing. Is that correct? Well, it, it, like everything else with COVID, it depends on who you ask. But the, the key thing for the 43 percent is that we have tested overwhelmingly because we had limited supplies from the federal government. We've tested overwhelmingly symptomatic folks. So that number is, is disproportionately higher than any estimate of what the, the general population would look like. And that's an important footnote on that number. So if you were testing asymptomatic and symptomatic, and we hope to be able to do that sooner than later, we're going to need to at least double our testing capacity uh, until we feel comfortable that we've got the system in place to start to reopen. Uh, and you include asymptomatic folks, that percentage positive is going to go down dramatically. Governor, you've canceled school through May 15th here in this state. Traditionally, our schools go till the 20-something of June. Do you think reasonably that there is a chance schools will be back in session this year? And by this year, I mean there this year. There is a chance. Yeah, yeah, there is a chance. Uh, we have not made that decision. Uh, we have tried to take this in bites. We wanted to have as much information at our disposal as possible. Uh, and so, as you're right, absolutely right, we've, we've canceled in, in person schooling until at least May 15. Uh, and we'll give guidance before May 15 as to where we see the rest of the school year. But if, if, is there a chance we could get back in some new reality? We're, it, this is all going to be uh, a, a new norm, including what school looks like, uh, distancing, uh, how, wh whether or not you have general assemblies. My guess is you don't. Do we wear, do we encourage face coverings, et cetera? Those questions are to be determined. Uh, but yes, there is a chance that we could, we could get back in school. I've also heard that we have about four to six weeks of, of revenue still on hand before the state starts to run out of cash. I know you've had some disagreements with the federal government on the money that has been allocated and what it can be spent on. What, what are your biggest complaints about the restrictions around what this money could be spent on and what you think it should be spent on? Yeah, so we've, we're, we're probably not unlike a lot of American states. I, I might add both red and blue, uh, but we're running short. Uh, we're at the front line. Our costs are going up serving folks who have, who have lost their jobs, small businesses that have been crushed, uh, folks who are in the health care system, et cetera. Our revenues have fallen off a table. So a couple of things. The CARES Act, we're still trying to find good common ground as to how we can spend that money. Uh, I had a good conversation at the end of the week with Secretary Mnuchin. 
his team and my team have been at it over the weekend. We're still not there yet. Uh, but but the, how that money is interpreted, uh, you know, for instance, your entire education system has been transformed because of COVID-19. Your entire public safety reality has been transformed. Uh, we believe those are eligible uh, costs that need to be addressed. So there's one piece of this is how do we interpret the CARES Act? The far bigger piece is going to be that we need a lot more federal assistance. Uh, Senator Menendez in our state and Senator Cassidy in Louisiana have co-sponsored a, a bill that would bring $500 billion in direct cash assistance to states. That's exactly what the doctor ordered. Um, with all due respect to Senator McConnell, uh, whose comments about bankruptcy of states I found irresponsible and wrong. The alternative is not bankruptcy. The alternative is we will gut the living daylights out of the very services that our, that our folks now are desperately relying upon in what is the biggest health care crisis in the history of our country. So we need federal help, not only interpretation of the CARES Act money, but we need a lot more money, direct cash assistance coming from Congress and the president. Meaning what? In four to six weeks, when we run out of money here in the state, you won't be able to pay teachers, you won't be able to pay firemen, you won't be able to pay policemen. What are you, what are you talking about? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Now, God willing, we'll be able to both interpret uh, properly the CARES Act uh, uh, disbursements and we'll get another big slug out of the feds. But that's the sort of Armageddon that we're looking at. And I don't say that with any amount of joy. That's exactly the wrong thing we should be doing, but we'll have no choice. Hey, Governor, there, I, I completely understand what you're talking about with these payments that need to go out and, and those people on the front lines and those who are taking care of our kids in particular to make sure that they're still learning. But there have been some piggish examples from other states. Illinois, the Senate president there, sent in a note requesting a huge amount of money, including $10 billion, to bail out their underfunded pension plan. And that seems a little ridiculous when you start hearing about issues like that. We have our own underfunded pension plan, plan here in New Jersey. Is that something that you would ask money for? What do you think about Illinois' move to do just that? Now, listen, I got elected to fix the economy, both to make it grow again and make it fair again. And we had spent over two years stabilizing <clears throat> just the sorts of things you're asking about. Uh, we've made historically high pension payments. We had historic high surpluses and rainy day funds. We had things going in the right direction. <clears throat> and and uh, to quote the immortal Mike Tyson, everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face. We've been punched in the face. Uh, I'm not looking for help for stuff that we were already working on that we had inherited, uh, the, the, the structural deficits that had been building up in New Jersey for decades, in particular in the last administration. That's not, the, that, that's not what we're looking at. I'm, I'm looking at revenues that have fallen off, a table, off the table. I'm looking at expenses to, to deal with the unemployed, the folks in the healthcare system, the small businesses that have skyrocketed. Uh, that's ex explicitly what we need help with. You are also working with other governors in this region. I think six or seven states have kind of banded together, uh, including New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, Maryland, to try and figure out what's going to come next, Pennsylvania. What, what are you hearing from those governors, and are there parts of that alliance that would like to open sooner than others? Yeah, it's a very good group. It's from Massachusetts down to Delaware, um, in, the, in the relationships that are the dearest to us are the ones clearly who are our neighbors, none more so important than New York and Governor Cuomo. We had coordinated as an informal matter <clears throat> in closing our economies. It occurred to us, hey, why not put a little bit more formality around a regional council as we, as we look to take the steps to reopen. <clears throat> in fact, there's a meeting going on of the council right now. I don't, <clears throat> I don't think you'll see us taking, in each case, identical steps, but I think you'll see our steps harmonized. Uh, and and our, our enormous uh, overlaps are going to be in the metro New York reality, from New York City into the northern and northeast counties in New Jersey that have been hit the hardest, have been crushed. Uh, as I said, with almost 6,000 deaths, every county in our state has fatalities, but the bulk of, bulk of them are up there. So you're going to see a deep amount of coordination. Again, not necessarily exact lockstep actions, but coordination on schools and norms as it relates to testing 
as it relates to what a restaurant or a bar should look like, uh, et cetera. It's, so far, it's been very productive. Uh, and these states have been very good to work with. We're the densest state in America and the densest region in America. So this stuff is important. Uh, and, I, and I'm happy we're a part of it. Governor, could you see separating uh, the population, if you will, in New Jersey that commutes into New York City and uses public transport from everybody else who effectively is, is driving to work and, and, and driving their kids to school? Because clearly, from a risk perspective, it's, it's the public transport. It's getting into a, a, a city where there's obviously more surfaces, more, more ability for, for the virus to spread. And how do you sort of break that dynamic? Because even if you have a parent who's going into the city, taking a bus into the city, taking the train into the city, then, then, then going back and forth and then coming back out to New Jersey, that's where the risk gets presented in a way where, where of course, New York City makes all of this that much more complicated. Yeah. I mean, all, th all considerations are around the table, without question. Um, and how we go about that, we not only have a regional council that I mentioned a minute ago, but we're, we're going to announce a council that, that is advising us explicitly for New Jersey matters within the next day or so. Uh, and those are the sorts of issues and questions we're talking about. <clears throat> we're, we're not necessarily unique in any respect here, but the three communities, and, and, and by the way, there's a lot of overlap in these communities that have been crushed in terms of sickness and fatality, our older folks in our state, folks with uh, coexisting health care challenges or comorbidities, and folks in long-term care facilities, without question. And again, in many cases, that's, that's an overlapping of the same individuals. Uh, but trying to find a way to protect them uh, is going to be paramount. And, and there is an element there, without question. We are part of the Metro New York saga here. Uh, and that includes the six counties in our Northeast mm -hmm. that, are, that, that contribute the most amount of commuting in, in and out of New York. And how we handle that will be a big piece of this, without question. What the answer is, I'm not sure yet at this point. Uh, but without question, that's, that's one of the challenges we've got. Uh, Governor, I, I realize you have to go. A, a very quick last question for you. We spoke with the CEO of LabCorp last week, who is talking about these new in-home tests that they can now do for coronavirus. It's not legal here in the state of New Jersey. Is that something you're considering looking into and changing, perhaps? Yeah, I mean, we're looking at, on testing. We're looking at everything. LabCorp has been great. It's one of, one of the pr processing firms that we've leaned on most heavily. We need to at least double our testing capacity. Uh, Rutgers has got a very promising saliva test, which we believe and they believe can be scaled. Uh, again, LabCorp, BioReference, Quest, other players in here. We're talking to everybody, including the White House. Uh, we, we have some amount of optimism <clears throat> that we'll be able to see a big uptick in our testing capabilities literally in the next, within the next month.